Hello friends, you're with the Lonesome Gamer. Today I'm playing Target Earth by Gen Games. It's a sci-fi game where some terrible cruel aliens you can see them here with their flying saucers and their their uh, ground, their powerful ground troops where they try to uh, conquer planet Earth and it's your job to prevent that from happening. For me the interesting part is uh, it's, uh, this game can be played uh, semi-cooperative, completely cooperative or solo. And as a lonesome gamer that makes it an interesting game for me. Okay, the game is nearly set and I just want to give you a quick look over the components. Uh, we have some dice and uh, they feel actually pretty good but um, the, the red dots, they are a little dark so if you don't have too much light it's sometimes a little, uh, a little hard to, to recognize what, what you wrote. And we have some, it's called alliance cards. So these are cards uh, that you can use to um, improve your chances during the game. We have some um, reference cards here. Alien markers. These are not all, by the way. We have here modules that you will use to build up your base. Here we have uh, the UFOs. These are some target um, target markers. Here we have a um, a table where we can keep track of, for example, the victory points here. We both start with uh, the aliens start with um, 24 and the humans start also with 24 victory points. And here we have the money. Uh, the blue tokens are used to um, exactly indicate how much money you have at the moment and the red tokens uh, show your income. And these uh, circles here, uh, I used to keep track of your technology status. You have four technologies. This here is, uh, well, uh, fighters. These are the troops. These are the tanks. And this is alien technology. And here we have the board. You can see the Earth with the uh, um, most powerful countries, at least the countries that the, the designers think might be the most powerful countries in, I don't know, in this game, uh, I think in 2030 or something like that. And uh, yeah, then we have um, some. We have here uh, in this area there will be the uh, countries that are the targets. They will be placed here in this lower area. Up here, we will place the UFOs, and then we can decide uh, where we want to try to intercept the UFOs with our fighters. And down here we have the ground fighting. There will be ground troops here uh, of the um, 
of the aliens and also of the alliance. These are our um, our bases with the generals who command them. There are four different generals in the game. They all have a little different abilities. We have the um, army general here. He can uh, re-roll any of his um, of his combat dice. He can do this three times during the game. You can you have these markers here to indicate that, but he can only do this once uh, in a turn. And here we have uh, the an intelligence officer, and uh, she can try to uh, send agents on diplomacy missions to improve the chances to influence uh, some countries uh, and that will allow her to add or subtract one from the diplomacy role. And here on this grid there will be uh, modules placed which then uh, build the base and here you have a sequence of play and uh, some player aids how much you have to pay for the different uh, units and so on uh, finally here we got some troops over there of every color there are different troops not not different troops I mean uh, basically they all have the same troops but in a different color and here we have uh, the countries with a green side to indicate that it's an alien country you can flip that side to a blue side to indicate that it's a neutral country now the goal of the game is to get victory points and as I already said we keep track of the victory points here if we manage to have 50 victory points at the end of a turn, then we win the game. Well, I checked it and I was not quite right. I need more than 50 victory points. If I manage to do this at the end of the turn, I win the game. If at the end of turn 7, I have more victory points than the alien faction and if I have a uh, full alien knowledge um, then I also win the game. If uh, this is not the case at the end of the game then the aliens win, of course, at the end of turn 7. If the aliens ever have more than 50 points, the aliens also win. And if for some reason it's not possible for me to gain that full alien knowledge until the end of the game, then I also lose the game. So much about the winning and losing conditions. So how to gain victory points? Each country has here at the top V2, V2, V4 and so on. And these are the victory points that you, that you get if the country is part of your alliance. Furthermore you have down here on the right, on the lower right side um, another number and that's the money you get each turn if the country is part of your alliance. And here on the lower left side that shows what you have to roll 
if you want to influence this country uh, during the uh, diplomacy phase to change sides. Now at the beginning the real powerful countries are not yet in the game. They start the game in a neutral status and we made four piles. Uh, one with countries that give you four uh, bucks if you control them, another one with three, two, and one. And now at the beginning of the game we're gonna draw two countries of each of these piles randomly uh, to see um, which are the countries that are on our faction, on our alliance. And we'll do the same for the aliens. Okay, so now, let's see. Uh, the Terence Alliance is Canada, UK, then we got Poland, Iran, Pakistan, South Africa, and Russia. I think that's it. Spain, over here. And the aliens are, uh, or with the aliens, is Argentina, France, Germany, Italy, Australia, Taiwan, and South Korea, and Sweden. Okay, and uh, so at the beginning, each faction has uh, 24 victory points. Furthermore, each player starts with seven, um, seven aliens car uh, alliance cards, and with twelve dollars, whatever the the name of the currency is. Uh, it's a little it's a little strange here because. Actually, there is not really much money tokens. There are not really much money tokens. So I use these uh, victory point tokens, which you normally only need for the semi -co cooperative game. I use them uh, to... Uh, instead of money tokens. That's, that's okay if you play solo. Now you can start uh, building your base and you invest this uh, you invest these 12 uh, bucks in the base and uh, as I already said you got these modules here you got different modules here radars and these are storage uh, buildings here we have uh, hangars and these are uh, science laboratories. These are um, uh, these are barracks for your soldiers. And finally, we have garages. Uh, let me see where we have them. Uh, Here we are, and there for your tanks. And the interesting thing is now you have to build one of these storage modules. Um, and you're not allowed to have more modules of the same kind than the number of storage modules so you have. So let's say I, I got two of these storage modules then I can have, I don't know, one garage, two hangars, two radars, two barracks, but I'm not allowed to have let's say uh, three radars. That's not possible. Never more 
than the maximum number of storage modules I have. I simply had to, to build another storage module and then I could buy another radar. Each module costs uh, two dollars to build. And if I want to buy units, I need these modules first. Because, uh, for example, for troops, uh, I need to buy the barracks and then I can build, buy some troops and place them here on the module. And that's important. You need uh, a home base for every of your troops. Otherwise, the troops will be destroyed when they come back from battle. And here you can see the, the soldiers um, cost one, the fighters two, the tanks two. These are transport, um, transport machines. They cost you three. They bring your ground troops to the battlefield. So you also need um, you also need transport units and you need the hangars for these transport units to use your ground troops on the battlefield. And each transport unit can carry, uh, let me check that. So a shuttle can carry up to two troops and one tank. Okay, so let's uh, let's start with the with uh, the first building of the bases. Well, I just checked again, and if you play with only two players, then you get uh, you get twenty four bucks for the start, not only twelve. So that's just. Uh, just a mistake. Okay, now we did the first uh, base building and here we got, as you can see, two storage buildings and we have garages with tanks. We have here a, a barracks with a, with a trooper. We have a laboratory, radar facility, another laboratory and an empty hangar and over here also two storage um, tiles and then we have two barracks with uh, a soldier each we have also a garage with um, a tank we have a hangar with a fighter we have two radar and an empty second hangar. Uh, to be honest, I did this kind of randomly. Not, not really, it's uh, just... Um, I'm not sure why actually, because maybe if I didn't, it would be pretty much the same all, all the time. So I, I kind of decided to do this in a kind of randomly fashion, but... Uh, as I said, it's not. It's it's still there's still a balanced way that I do this. And this guy here, uh, this guy here keeps uh, one buck. Um, that's left, and the lady has spent all her money. Okay, and then we are ready to start the game I assume. Okay so now let's start with the first turn and uh, we have different phases and all players go through these phases and then go on to the next one. So first we start with the income phase and now the we have an income of 20 that uh, is this uh, income 
of the single countries, but not of the green ones actually, the blue ones, uh, just add it up and that is 20 and to indicate this we have the red markers here and now we will place the blue markers uh, on top of them simply to indicate that this is the money that we now really possess okay it's a little fiddly the markers are very small and uh, so the next phase is the research phase and normally you can do one research each turn and as I already said there are four technologies here you can see the cost of the research and this is the number of um, of laboratories you need to do the research you have to pay now right at the beginning but then you won't get the results uh, right away but at the end of the turn that will be checked if you have enough laboratories because they could have been destroyed uh, during the turn and if that's the case then you get the uh, benefits of your resource of your research in the next turn so let me see what I'm gonna do now uh, I think I'm I'm spending my money in troops now I can roll one die for each trooper if I spend the money I could roll two dice then but first it goes here in the middle I have to pay five so oops one two three four five I got now 15 left, just like this. <clears throat> and now let me see. Yeah, I've got a scientist. That's very good. I can play this guy, and that allows me to do a second research phase. So that's a very powerful card. And uh, when I play a card, I have to turn this around to indicate that I played one of my alliance cards during this turn. Every player is only allowed to play two alliance cards during a single turn. So that was the scientist and you can only play one scientist per turn and that allows me now to do another research and I will research the fighters and by the way I'm also only allowed to do one research um, of each kind in a single turn so I couldn't uh, research uh, the troops to level 3 for example. That's not allowed. Um, okay, so I have to pay again 5. So this goes down to 0. So now I got 10 left. And now comes the diplomacy phase. And that is extremely important we can try to um, to get a uh, neutral country on our side now the neutral countries are the ones with the gray frame and uh, as you can see each country has here in the lower left a number d9 d6 
and uh, I now roll two dice and then I can add a modifier and it depends on how many countries I control the more I have the better is the modifier if I have if I have less than six than ten countries and that's the case here because I only control eight then the modifier is zero okay so um, I simply roll two dice and if it's equal or higher than the number of the country I choose to influence then the country joins my alliance um, I will now use an intelligence uh, an agent and send him also on a diplomatic mission and that allows me to add one to my die roll. And I'm gonna try to influence India. It's a pretty powerful country, it gives me five income, six victory points and uh, I need an eight but because I can add one I need a seven and I think uh, I got a pretty good chance to do this but this is really an important role and I made it it's an 11 this is amazing okay so that was perfect um, just to give you an idea if I uh, want to get for example uh, Saudi Arabia which would give me just one income I need a six the same with Egypt um, for example we got Indonesia I need a seven to get two income so I think it's a pretty good deal to roll an eight to get an income of five uh, if we want to go for China I would gain eight but I had to roll a nine which is pretty tough and the top country is actually the US, 10, but it gives you an income of 10 and also 10 victory points. So if you control the US, you might win this game. Okay, so now I can, uh, I can take here the Indian marker and place it here on the board. It's now under my control. I gain six victory points. So I will take that victory point marker here and place it on number 30. Eh, yeah, come on. And I gain five income. So now it's my income is 25 actually okay but I get this in the next turn not right now so that was definitely very good by the way I mixed this up I forgot the production step number three production step but actually it isn't that important um, yeah it's not that bad so um, first I will finish the diplomacy step now normally it should have been afterwards I play with the optional rule alien diplomacy so now the aliens simply draw from this target cup where all the neutral countries and the alliance countries are and they uh, that's the target then and they try to influence Mexico okay so let's see they need an eight to do that okay so it's basically the same it's the same modifiers they have a they have also eight countries under control so uh, it's a modifier of zero, so they need an eight. Oops, and again, ah, bad luck. I just had it. Okay, 
So, now this one is here on the green side and they gain four victory points for that country. So they're now at 28. Okay. And uh, then we have to remove Mexico from the target cup. Okay, so now after we've done that, we have to do this production phase and normally it would have been the other way around first the production then the diplomacy and uh, now we see we got money 10 and uh, this money is now equally split between both players so every player gets now five bucks we go five for everyone and then we can build some new modules and troops so this guy first of all he buys a fighter for that hangar that's two and then He will, let me check this, yeah, he will play another card and this is an engineer. And this engineer allows him to build a module for free. So first he has to turn this again and now he's not allowed to play any more cards during this turn. But he can build another hangar now. So here we are. And then he can buy a shuttle for three. And this is actually this one. And it's placed here. Okay. She also plays a card and that is the fortified base. And that gives her a bonus when her base is attacked. So now she can turn this. And then she can use this marker here, place it here next to the base to indicate that it's fortified. And then she pays um, three bucks also for for a shuttle, so that the ground troops can move to a battlefield. And then she has two left, and the other player has one left. So that was the production, we already did the diplomacy phase and the alien diplomacy, now we come to the UFO. In this phase we will randomly determine which country is attacked by what type of UFO. There are actually four types of UFOs, the small ones, the medium ones, the big ones and the terror UFOs. The game is now divided into four phases. Um, you can see that here phase one includes turn one to three. Phase two is four and five and the last two turns are phase three. The aliens getting stronger during these phases and uh, basically you should um, 
you should build a U UFO cup and it's uh, in the rule book uh, there are detailed numbers of USO UFOs that should be placed in that cup during phase one for example I don't know maybe five small UFOs um, five medium and two strong ones something like that for example and no terror the terror UFOs only come in the last phase then there is also an optional rule you can do this all randomly so you simply place all the UFOs in the box and then draw. I'll do a little house rule here, I'll do something in between. Um, I also draw just randomly from the cup but during the first two phases if I draw a terror UFO I put it back inside the cup. During the last phase, if I draw a small UFO, I put it back inside the cup. So that's basically it. Um, yeah, so now let's see, we start um, now with the phase. And I'm not sure how many UFOs attack during the first phase. I have to check that. Okay, so now we have four UFOs during the first phase. I first draw the four target markers. So we have Iran. You, place, you have to place them here in the middle on these circles. We have the red base that is attacked. We have Pakistan, and finally Turkey. Okay, so and now we place the UFOs. This is a strong UFO. I think they look quite cool actually. This is now placed here and that attacks Iran. That is a medium UFO attacking the red base. Small UFO attacking Pakistan. And that's a terror one. Another one. Oh, come on. Well, I always draw terror UFOs. That's now, okay, here we go. Small one for the turkey. Okay. And now we have to decide. That was the UFO phase, and now we come to the interception phase. And now we can decide which UFO we want to try to uh, intercept with our fighters and which UFO we want to uh, let through and uh, then attack them on ground battle. Okay, I decided uh, that I will fight the, the big UFO over Iran um, in a ground battle that I will defeat my base also in a ground battle, that I will def try to de uh, defend Pakistan, uh, I will try to intercept the UFO over Pakistan, and 
I will sacrifice uh, the Turkey because they are neutral. They are not my allies. So if I lose an ally, it's kind of worse because then I lose more income and I lose victory points. But uh, if I lose the... Um, if a, if, a, um, if a neutral country goes to the aliens, they gain victory points, but I don't lose something. So I think that's, that's a better idea for me. Okay, so now we have to fight here the battle over Pakistan. And the aliens attack with three dice. It's this lower right number that shows a three. Each five or six is a hit. So, one hit. And now you can mark the alien hits if you want to. You can mark them here on that track. And we have now these two fighters. And uh, right now every fighter has a combat value of two. So I can take two dice per fighter. So I can take four dice altogether. And uh, the point is now we need more hits than the aliens. So it's not going to be easy. And we don't have that. We only have one hit, so the problem is now one random fighter is destroyed. That's the first one, so this fighter is destroyed. So, I think it might be a good idea to simply retreat. It's bad, but uh, I have to accept that. Okay. And then we come to the mission phase. And that means now that from left to right, we have to do the ground battles. Oh, and I think I should have placed the, the transporters here, but I said before what I wanted to do. I wanted to place, of course, the... I already said that I wanted to defend uh, Iran with my ground troops. So now I place my ground troops here and uh, hmm. I'm afraid that's that's pretty dangerous but we will see okay and you can see now here how many troops the aliens have they have these uh, troops of three. They, ha they have three of them. And, whoops, let me see, let me check that. No, they have two of these and two of these. And that's definitely stronger than what I have. So I think I'm, I, I won't start that war at all. I'm... I don't fight them. I think I made an error here. I should have concentrated on one country. That was that was stupid actually. Yeah, that was a stupid mistake. Okay, anyway, so now I'm going to lose I'm going to lose Iran. Okay, so now we didn't try to defend Iran and uh, now they can try to make a diplomatic role. The question is now, is this, um, is this UFO so threatening and was it so devastating that the Iran decided to leave the alliance? 
and they can add two to this roll because it's a strong UFO. You can see that here on the upper left corner and they normally would only need a seven. Well, that's pretty bad actually. So let's roll. Yeah, that's enough. Okay. So now Uran is neutral again. It's not on the alien side, but it's a neutral country now. So we've lost now two victory points and an income of two. That's pretty bad. Okay, so here we are and here we go. And then it's here the uh, the red base that's attacked now by a middle UFO. And here we have to fight. And we have actually these three troops inside the base, so uh, these air units won't fight here, but the three troops will. Now that's not so bad actually, we only have two of these uh, um, of these units, two of them, so that's one and actually I think they look pretty harmless. So and we place them now here in this area and then we can take our defenders and we now can place them equally here on the other area and we can decide in which way we want to do this and I think I'm going to spend I'm going to place two tanks here to attack this guy and I have to spend I have to place one um, to attack him I have to do it equally I can't say okay this one goes also here but I have to do it like this, and if there was a third one, then I, everywhere should be one. But uh, because I have three units, I can place on one play space two, and on the other one, one. And now we're starting from left to right with the first turn of battle, and the aliens attack, and they now have an attack value of two. So they can roll two dice. And this is no hit. And my tanks have also an attack value of two. So they can roll four dice. That's also no hit. Well, that's bad. And then in the next turn, the aliens attack. Oops. Wait a minute, that was wrong. First, first this guy will now attack. And uh, it attacks the trooper. And that's a hit. That's very bad because the trooper can't win this. Even if he has a hit, he has to have more than the other guy. So the trooper is killed now. And that's bad because now these two aliens fight the two tanks. And that's a problem and uh, oh man I'm really not lucky now. So they roll again and they have two hits which is really bad and I can try to roll to defeat them and I have three hits. Well that was lucky. That was great. So now one of the aliens is destroyed and uh, we can go on. Um, so again the aliens attack but only with two dice now and that is no hit and I can again roll four dice and two hits. Okay, so I was lucky here that I destroyed them and then the two tanks go back into the garage
and the UFO is destroyed and it is removed from the game. Okay, and now after we were successful here, uh, the aliens were destroyed and because this was a ground battle, we gain an alien knowledge point because we found the, the dead bodies and some technology and so on. And then, in addition to this, I will play this card here that says alien knowledge and that will allow us to gain another alien knowledge point. And we need these points to find better technologies here, also here. So it's uh, absolutely necessary also to fight ground battles to learn more about these aliens. And then we have to do the last missions and that's now the one over Pakistan and uh, at least that doesn't have a diplomacy modifier so let me check this it's Pakistan if he rolls a six which shouldn't be so hard we also lose Pakistan and they didn't that was great it's only a five very good that's great and uh, then they try to impress the Turkish people and they need to roll a 7 to do this. And yeah, that, that was easy. A 9. So the Turkey is now also on the side of the aliens. So the aliens now gain two additional victory points. They have now 30 while I have 28. These UFOs go back in the cup. The Turkey target marker is removed and uh, Iran is still neutral and Pakistan is still on my side so they go back in the target cup. Okay, and then we come to the end of the turn and, uh, well, first of all we can check now if the requirements for the technology is fulfilled. And we need two laboratories and um, we were lucky, they couldn't uh, attack our base or or destroy any laboratories and we have two this one and that one so it's okay uh, you don't need four by the way it's enough if you have once these two laboratories then you can go on here with the technology so now my fighters are stronger and the troops are also a little better now And let me see, in addition to this, I'm not sure, yeah, we can draw two of these allied alliance cards, each one, so that one is another engineer. And that one is a scientist. That's good. The intelligence officer draws also two cards, another scientist and another alien knowledge card. Uh, one of her special abilities next to using this agent is uh, she could discard one uh, one of these cards and draw another one instead and I'm thinking about doing this but I think on the other hand 
Well, I could discard a bonus card. They are actually quite useful, but uh, hmm. I don't really know if I should do that. I think I'll keep it. Okay, so uh, that was the first turn. Uh, it was a little mess. It is some time that I played the game uh, the last time. Uh, I hope the next turns are better. And uh, I hope you get the, the basic idea of this game. So, um, yeah, hope to see you in my next videos and uh, in my next turns. And until then, bye.